Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hello Dave. We have a number of topics to talk about this week, so let's just dive into it with a quick update on what's going on over on the EPTU server for Star Citizen. We still have update 322 running its course over there, and there's been some minor changes to this new structural salvage feature, and there's been some balancing passes on it that I actually think is quite nice. Um, CIG has been bouncing the um, the new like buffer that you have on the uh, on the filtering stations for the for the vulture it's relatively small the first it was 14 then it got bounced down to 12 now it's been bounced back up to 13 but for the reclaimer it's a lot more it started about 400 then it's got nerfed all the way to 140 or now it's bounced back up to 240 so at the time of this recording the buffer on the reclaimer is 240 but to also try and balance this out more they've also changed the prices around um, for both the uh, hull scrape material and the structural salvage materials that you get. And they actually done it in a nice way, because usually you would think, oh, so the structural material was paying like ludicrous amounts of money. So we would expect that you were going to go and just like nerf the hell out of that. Um, they have done that. Uh, usually it would be like 12,500, they halved the price of that, so now it's down to 6,000 which is still a lot if you compare it to how much we usually get from hull scrape material because you can collect this structural material so much faster. So 6,000 per CU is really, really good. But to balance it out, they have absolutely buffed structural salvage material, RMC, to the moon. It's now doubled what it was before. It's up at 14.5K per SCU, which is amazing. So that looks like salvage is going to be a really, really good moneymaker in... Uh, in 3.22 when it comes out. Some of the other things they've added in this patch is also the new derelict settlements that you can go and explore. There are 15 of them scattered out throughout the Stanton system, so you have some new sites to go and see. As I said, it's still on EPTU. I think we are... Are we on wave 3 now? Are we even further? I actually don't know how, how far we are. We are a few waves now down the line, so there should be a lot more people who have access now. And we don't have an official launch date for it for when this hits the live servers. But given how quickly they are progressing with the, with the waves right now, um, we should probably see it this or next week. At the very least, everybody's expecting that we're going to see it before Christmas. So there should not be that much time left before we have this over on the live servers. Talking about the live servers, um, CAG has also announced that there's going to be a number of new ships that's going to make it into buyable in-game. So as you may know, if you played the game for a while, you will know that Usually when new ships are introduced, they will be money only for a patch and for the subsequent patch, they will be made available in the in-game stores. And the ships that are going to be made available in the next patch, they're not here yet, but in the probably the 322 patch when that comes out, is going to be the Spirit A1, the um, Drake Cutter Scout, all the Fury lines of ship and the whole C. It's all going to be made available in the in-game store. So we can go and use your in-game money instead of out of game real money to uh, to pay for those ships. Uh, this week, they are also starting a event, the, the yearly like uh, Christmas events. It's not called Christmas, it's called uh, Luminalia. Um, the event is the same as they have been the other years, but it's worth mentioning because there's a number of free items up for grabs. Not for grabs, actually, you can get them. It's not a, like, not a, not a contest. You can just go and grab um, <laughs> free items. So the event is, as usual, is there's a number of small packages, boxes, like, scattered and hidden throughout um, throughout the stands. And you can go and collect those, you can sell those. You're not going to make a ton of money out of it, but it's fun, and it's it's a nice little event that you can go and do. But more importantly, on the homepage, on robertspaceindustries.com, they're going to be running this calendar, like, advent calendar, where every day, I think it starts this week, but you can log in every day, and there's a calendar, and you click, and then you get an item um, they have confirmed that it's not just going to be cosmetics. There's some actual in-game items you can get. The other years has been like, here's a pistol or here's a little weapon, which might not seem like a lot, but when you're starting out um, from a from a from a uh, from a wipe, having a few extra weapons or armor pieces available just off the bat is super nice. So there are some cool little uh, things. There might also be some cosmetics like sweaters and, and you know, cosmetic items. But we can probably also expect to see a few weapons here and there, at least toward the end of it. Um, quick, Elite Dangerous. Um, not a lot of news yet, but we are expecting to hear a lot of information this week. I am, at least. Um, Frontier have their final frame shift live this week on the 14th. That is on Thursday at 16 o'clock UTC. 
Um, this is the usual, they have this every year where they have this like holiday event they often invite some developers on, there's often a lot of giveaways. Um, it, it's usually a, a, a quite chill, fun live stream. Now the reason why we're expecting to hear a lot, normally they don't announce a lot of things, it's just, you know, casual fun and have a nice Christmas everybody kind of live stream. Um, but the reason why I'm expecting that we are going to hear something is because earlier in the year, Frontier promised us that they would tell us more about this big feature overhaul they were doing um, at the end of the year. Now, there's not a lot of the year left, <laughs> so this is going to be one of their last chances to tell us anything about what their plans are for next year. Um, I'm expecting if that big feature overhaul is still on the table, then we're going to hear something about it during that live stream. There is a chance that they are not going to talk about it at all, not mention it at all, in which case I have no doubt that the forum is going to get flooded with questions. So if Frontier just have a, like, a few seconds thought about it and they remember what they promised us a few months back, um, they are going to at least mention, um, at the very least, if they can't give us any information now, they're going to do the usual Frontier spiel and say, we can't tell you anything more now, but we will tell you something later. I'm really hoping we get some information about what their plans are for the game next year. Um, we only have that financial statement saying that they are committed to uh, supporting and developing the games for the next three years, but what exactly their plans are next year, other than continuing the, the Thargoid Saga, your guess is as good as mine. I'm really hoping some information on that feature overhaul, but we'll see on Thursday when we have the Frontier uh, Frameshift Live Christmas screen. Uh, also, quick update on uh, Kerbal Space Program 2. I haven't really covered it much since it came out like in February. Or it went through early access in February. Um, and together with the launch, they also put out a roadmap with five different um, updates that they were going to be pushing out to the game. And here in December, um, we are getting the first one called For Science. And this is the science update that all adds all the science modules and you can now do research, collect science and science trees. Those kind of things are now going to be added in this patch. Now, it's taken 10 months since original launch until we reach the first of the five announced patches. So if they continue at this pace, um, we can expect a full launch of the game in April 2027. I hope we're going to see it a little earlier. Um, I know that like they had a lot of things, especially performance issues, right when the, when the early alpha came out. They've been working a lot on, on that. So I'm pretty sure that we're going to see shorter periods between these updates going forward but for now the only two measurement points or only one measurement point that we have between how long it takes them to develop these updates well it looks like then somewhere in the beginning of 2027 <laughs> but let's see at least of a science update for Kerbal Space Program 2 should be out here um, in December so, uh, so that should be uh, some new stuff to play with if you are into Kerbal. Moving on to the live stream, I'm going to be live streaming tomorrow, business as usual here on YouTube, 8 o'clock GMT, and I am going to be jumping into the um, Luminalia event, and we're going to be collecting some packages, we're just going to be having some fun, usually when we just run around, weird stuff happens because it's Star Citizen, and the game always throws you a curveball, so we're going to collect some packages, maybe run into some random people, see what happens, and just go and have a bit of fun. Um... Again, we're getting close to Christmas, so I, I wanted to, to keep it a little bit more lighthearted, and we've done a lot of salvage the last couple of days, so it would be nice to just go and do a little bit of sightseeing, maybe find some silly clothes in-game and put it on, and just chit-chat and have a fun talk about the game. So if you want to uh, to drop by and um, and collect some packages with me, then drop by the live stream tomorrow at 8 o'clock GMT. That's been it for this week. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.